Odessa, the biggest city of southern Ukraine, is famous for her sunny weather and her multicultural background. This city is so beautiful that people call her the Pearl of Black Sea. One of the Odessa lifestyle is the yard. In these three episodes, we are going to tell you the stories of Odessa yards. Maybe you want to subscribe us before we start this video. The legend talks us about there was just some thief school in such yards of Moldavanka, pickpocket school. Uh -huh. um, that was organized by, so by Sonika the Golden Hand. I don't know, maybe you know some stories about she. It was extremely beautiful woman, her stake was beautiful. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, she was very clever. She knew a lot of languages. She was Jewish woman. No one knows where, where she was born, probably somewhere in Poland. But he was well known in the whole Russian Empire. It was 1890. A lot of policemen trying to catch her. Mm -hmm. She organized these thief schools inside yards, and the schools was all, always moving from one yard to another one, for no one can catch her. So because the golden hen was always stolen a lot of money or uh, very beautiful jewelry thing that's why the golden hand mm -hmm. and uh, she lived in Odessa during a long period and here in Odessa she was caged because her third husband I think very young man was caged by a policeman and he said please give me a freedom and I will give you information about mm -hmm. Sonika the golden hand that's, that's how the police found her here she was catched and she was moved to the prison and then she was moved to Sibiria. Siberia? Siberia. Mm -hmm. Siberia. A criminal, Mishka the Japan. We watch a few episodes. He's really Japanese? No, no, no. No, he's just Jewish. a nickname. Ah, okay. Just a nickname because he looks like Japanese. He has a little bit thin okay. eyes. And also he was, I don't know why, but he respects very much the rules of samurai. Uh -huh. And someone says that these rules he was using for organized everything here in Odessa. So his mafia was from 40 at the beginning till 4,000 people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have really strong structure and it was big order here inside Moldovan because that's why the people in Moldova Moldovan loved very much Mishka Yuponchik because Mishka the Japanese <laughs> because they feel themselves comfortable and safe even when he started to organize here everything. How long is it go? Uh, he lived just 37 or 38 years. He was uh. killed, I will tell you his story. Uh, he was born here in one small yard in Moldavanka. Now we will visit this yard. Mishka was born in a very, very poor family. That's why he became to steal and he was caged and took into the prison when he was 12. When he came back to you know, Odessa, he understood that he wanted to be a criminal. Mm -hmm. He wanted to become a bandit and to earn a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But the way when he became already the rich man, he didn't change the style of life. He didn't move from Moldavanka to city center, but he, he had a lot of business there in the city center. But he preferred to stay here in Moldavanka area. He just changed the yard and he moved to more comfortable and more big building right in the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, Mishka organized uh, big organization. All these people should respect the rules. No raids, no murders. Uh, everything should be quite uh, comfortable for the person you want to steal something. For mm. example, if a bandit for Mishka organization want to steal the fur coat, uh, she should take the girl, she should order the cup, she should bring the girl at home oh. and only there take her fur <laughs> coat. For she feel comfortable, for okay. she couldn't catch cold okay. like this. The rule was to respect, for example, the uh, doctors, the actors, 
uh, actress, actors, and uh, and teachers. The rule uh, speaks that you cannot take uh, the engagement ring. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it was very interesting. More gentlemen than some yeah, guys. Yeah, there was gentlemen. <laughs> And that's why maybe the people here in Moldovanka they like Mishka Yapunchik. And also he said that it's prohibited to steal something here inside Moldovanka area. Mm -hmm. The people here should say feel safe already. and comfortable. Mm -hmm. So if you want to steal something, you should go to city center. Mm -hmm. The people there are rich, they have a lot of business, a lot of yeah. money, they have a lot of tourists every day, Odessa Center, so you can easily go there. During the Russian Empire period he um, organized business. Uh, he invests in cafes and cinemas mm -hmm. in city center, so he have enough money for not to steal. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, 1970s, finally the communism came. Finally, because they trying to uh, came in Odessa from 1905. Mm -hmm. During 12 years, we have here revolution period, mm -hmm. very. Um, unsafe and not comfortable. But finally, when Mishka understood that the communism starts, he decided to be a political. Mm -hmm. Really interesting situation. Okay. So he organized the part of army from his people, the regiment. Uh -huh. Regiment. And he even posthumously was awarded by a um, Red Banner order fight for supporting communism. Mm -hmm. The people of Mishka uh, went to the war and uh, suddenly they understood that uh, it's, it's not so comfortable like to steal something in Odessa. This is real war, this is a real death and they wanted to go home. Mm -hmm. And Mishka said, okay, you could do it. Mm -hmm. but no, sorry, this is army. You couldn't say just sorry, uh, I want it's back to mommy. <laughs> yeah, it's not mine. So it Mishka was judged like deserter mm -hmm. and uh, he was put into the camps in prison and in one year he was exciting to death. Mm -hmm. so, like... <laughs> was built by architect Kotsebo. Kotsebo has as a teacher the Eiffel architect that built Eiffel Tower. Uh -huh. So maybe the structure a little bit looks the like same. Eiffel yeah. Tower. was built during the Soviet period and after Soviet Union was destroyed the building was also destroyed. There was a period at 1995, 1999, 2000 when this building trying to use like the big nightclubs uh, uh -huh. uh, somewhere you can find something that lasts from this nightclub. But oh, a lot of people make photo shoot here. Videos, yeah. Sometimes you can see the old road uh, under stone. this stone. Yeah, and now this is new road. Uh, not so new, but so very interesting, very unusual place even for Odessa. During the years, our city administration talking about renovation of this area. Yes. But I'm not sure that we will be better if we will build here some completely new building. Mm. Probably mm -hmm. we should balance between the garbage <laughs> yeah. and completely destroyed building and maybe some art house project, maybe some art cafe, something yeah. like this. You see? So this is the Crystal. nightclub. It was. Nightclub. Crystal Palace. Look, there's a cat and put his head outside of the window. <laughs> <laughs> Revolution. Yeah. 
because it's maybe the oldest market, so you know that. And as well, you see all the homeless and people. Uh -huh. That's why this area is not so safe. Yeah. Uh, it was as well known uh, not only in Odessa but I think in the whole post Soviet area. This is really legendary market and uh, you also can find a lot of movies, stories and uh, if you ask the people uh, that came to you know, Odessa about their association, for example, please tell me three points, uh, three attractive things that you should see in Odessa, probably they will say like opera theater, Potomkin stairs and Privos, mm -hmm. uh -huh. like this. Uh -huh. The first symmetry, you know, that's about there. The symmetry was destroyed uh, by KGB 1935, KGB. but uh, KGB. But mm -hmm. the stones are still there, so they destroy just the monuments. So inside this park, right under the your foot you can find a lot of stones. And if someone tried to build something inside, they always find a lot of stones and um, graves. If sometimes you will decide to kill someone in Odessa, just, just put don't it here. say this is my advice. <laughs> you can uh, hide there the body, and in several months, no one will care about the stones if they will, if they will find it because we have there a lot of stones. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, our market. Uh, it have no boards and sometimes the people moved from this market and sell everything at the nearest street. Okay. I think we've been around this area but not inside. Very typical small shrimps. Yeah. You know, that's a, the name is uh, Rachki. Uh -huh. Even today, you can find three walls, a lot of smuggling. That's why they ask. That's why they ask not to make movie, not to photo, not to make photo, because it's prohibited to sell this fish. Everyone knows it, but everyone knows that you can easily buy here everything you want: black caviar, red caviar, uh, all kind of fishes. Fake food, uh, fake um, shoes and fake uh, clothes, everything. Uh -huh. But this is more authentic and more typical for me. Yeah. Oh. Oh. This one is very typical for Odessa, very delicious. You should fry this flat fish. So the small park is the park of the death. As as it was a street where you can easily find a lot of prostitutes. Uh -huh. uh, it was a street where a lot of sailors uh, find the women. And some days, uh, one uh, local Odessa woman uh, visited Privos Market and uh, she bought Firajok uh, mm. with meat. And suddenly she found uh, the finger inside. Mm. Yeah. And she goes to the police and police ask to show the place where she bought it. So Paris, the police arrests the uh, the woman that sells the piroshki suddenly they understood that this woman worked like prostitute during the night and uh -huh. sell piroshki during the day. She killed the so, men, so. the sailors. Some of them she hide in this park, uh -huh. and some of them uh, she used for prepare piroshki. <laughs> <laughs> they nice found business. more than 20 bodies. <gasps> so spark. it's a lot. It's Twenty a lot. bodies. No one looking for the sailors because they came yeah, from yeah. different countries and who knows what can happen uh -huh. hundreds of years ago with the sailor. Did maybe he decided to stay Maybe here. he decided to stay here, maybe he find some family new ones. So if she wasn't so 
risky. Maybe no one found her. Mm -hmm. And in our police museum said that this is the most stupid murder in whole history of our city. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would yeah. not say that because we also have some Story parts. About parts. <laughs> yeah. In this uh, part of building where the entrance to the expensive apartment is, lived one very interesting person that decided not to pay the government and decided to renew everything by himself. Uh -huh. And now it's like the museum. Mm -hmm. And everything was very expensive from the beginning. Yeah. You can understand the level of this apartment. Something like six meter, uh -huh. fire, all doors, just six apartments here. The stairs, everything is very expensive. The steps making from the marble. 